All right. Hi, everyone. So I don't really know um, that much about Facebook Live. So I hope um, I hope that this goes okay and that everyone can hear me okay. If anyone logs in during the live, if you could just let me know if I need to speak up or anything like that, that would be great. Um, so I'm just coming here today because I have a ton of people every year around this time that start asking me questions about when to plant their seeds, how to start them, what soil to use. And so I'm really just coming here as a time saver for myself so I can tell you kind of how I do it all at once, you know, so we don't have, like, I don't have to say it to more than one person. <laughs> But it is something that there's a ton of videos online. Like there's so many videos online about starting seeds. So this is just my way of doing it. Um, if you have another way that works for you, most of them are correct. There's not really, there's a few pointers that I'm going to give that are like definitely try to avoid this. But other than that, you really, there's a lot of different ways to do this. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to talk about my setup, what to grow, where to buy the seeds, and then planting. So it's just kind of divided up a little bit into how to like start it up. I'm going to do another video in a couple of weeks about kind of continuing the process because we're not going to start all our seeds at the same time. Please, please. That's my biggest piece of advice. Don't start all your seeds at the same time. That will not end well. Okay, so the setup for starting seeds is gonna to be totally different for everybody. So some people have a ton of room. I personally have a big corner of my basement that's all set up just to grow all my seeds for vegetable gardens and for make, growing microgreens. So I have a lot of space, I have lights. So what I'm able to do is different than somebody else. So what I tell people to do first is where, like how much room do you have in your house? Do you have a whole room you can dedicate it to? Do you have a windowsill that you can dedicate? So that is gonna dictate how much seeds you can start. So you need a lot of space if you're going to start seeds like tomatoes or peppers or cucumbers or squash because they're bigger plants that have to have more time to start their seeds. So in the planting guides, it usually tells you how much space they'll need as in like an adult. Um, so you don't need that much space when you're growing the seeds, but you definitely don't want your plants kind of on top of each other all of the time. That's not gonna end well. So you got to make sure that you have enough space for what you're trying to grow. And I always tell people, be real about this. Like, don't try and fake yourself into thinking like, oh, yeah, I have tons of room for that. And then you really don't because you're going to end up being disappointed before the gardening season even starts. And that is like a major bummer. Okay, so one of the first things you have to consider is whether you're going to grow with lights or no lights. So I have two different setups for lights. I have an LED two-tone, which is a red-blue light, which is good for plants who eventually will have flowers. So I tell people, if you're going to eat the fruit of the plant, you need to have an LED two-tone because you won't get any flower development and it will slow the plant down. Now this is mostly for things like peppers, um, tomatoes, and then things like flowers. So if you're just growing stuff like greens inside, you don't need to have that two-tone light. I also have regular LED, like the old school fluorescent tube lights. Now they're all LED and they're super cheap. They're really, really good on electricity. So this is what I suggest for almost everybody is if you have the space to have a tower set up, Get the tower set up that has the LED tube lights going through it because it's just going to make your seedlings a little bit stronger and not as tall. Now, if you do not have space to have lights set up, that's totally fine. 
you don't have to have all those lights. You can grow on a windowsill, you can grow in low light for early starting of seeds. You don't have to have some elaborate setup. And I would even suggest if it's your first year growing seeds that you don't buy an elaborate setup. See what worked and what didn't work for you the first year, and then the second year, buy the thing that fits the model that you want to grow. Um, and so when your seedlings are really young, they basically, like until you have leaves on your seedlings, they don't really need light at all. Um, so just keep that in mind that you don't really want to have them under harsh light or very, very bright light. So if it's a south facing window, it might be too bright for seedlings until they've developed their first set of leaves. So that's usually a couple of weeks for most things. Peppers are particularly long and same with eggplant, their germination time is three weeks. So you won't even have a tiny little sprout until almost a month. Um, the next thing you have to think about during your setup is soil. So again, I really press that you pick something that, pick a space that you can totally devote to starting seeds and figure out how much space you have. Once you've figured out that space, you can kind of figure out how many pots you can have or how many trays you can fit in that space. It will be totally different for everyone. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment after and I can get back to you about what might work best for your space if it's not a very big one. Um, so the soil you're gonna wanna use is like a germination-based soil. So these soils are similar to potting soil, but lighter. So they have a higher percentage of cocoa fiber or peat moss, depending on who makes the soil. And so the intention of the soil is to give the roots of the plant that you're growing lots of space and air to grow those roots quickly. So germination soil doesn't have a lot of nutrients in it because it's organic low. So it's high in um, cocoa fiber or peat moss to make it kind of light and fluffy and hold water for longer. So germination soil, I say, is only good for starting seeds. It's not good for potting plants or potting larger seedlings that we have because they're going to start to become more hungry once they have their first and second set of leaves. Um, you can buy this in bulk from almost any nursery. Um, I use organic germination mix, um, but any of the germination mixes are okay. If you go to home hardware or somewhere like that, they're probably gonna have mostly potting soil. See if you can get a seed starting potting mix. And if you can't, mix it with cocoa fiber. And if you mix in 50% cocoa fiber into potting soil, that'll work too. So my third thing for setup is routine. So the most crucial part about starting seeds is that you have a routine so you don't forget about them. So, so many people start seeds and then either water them too often or water them not enough because they don't have a routine set up. Um, so I go every single morning and look at the seeds. I only water them when they need to be watered, so we'll talk about that later. But I have a routine, I wake up, I make my tea, I walk downstairs, I look at my seeds. It takes maybe five minutes of your day, but it's gonna make it so that you notice if your seeds aren't doing well, you notice at, before they've already gone too far and have died, and then you kind of have to start again. I find one of the biggest challenges with gardening is that people get frustrated with it, um, because they don't succeed the first time. Know that I kill seedlings every year. I always, there's always one or two things that I kill by accident or I didn't water enough, it was in the back and I wasn't paying attention, I didn't flip my trays. So don't get frustrated with it, just try and relax and have a little bit of fun. It's meant to be an enjoyable activity. Okay, so now we've kind of talked about what you need setup wise. Again, if you wanna reach out and ask questions, feel free to do that. Um, what to grow. This is the most important part about starting seeds is that you need to figure out um, your garden. So you have to plan your garden before you start seeds. You have to know what you have space for. You have to know 
um, how much room you have, how much time you're able to put into the garden. This dictates what type of plant you're going to be able to have in your garden. So what I always suggest to people is sit down and think about what you buy at the grocery store every single week. So sit down, write down your favorite vegetables, things you know for sure are going to get eaten. Because when you grow your own vegetables, you tend to have a lot of that thing for a specific amount of time. So if it's something that your family doesn't really like or you don't really like, that's probably not going to work out and it's going to be a waste of time, like space and time in your garden. So avoid things that are kind of uh, a special buy. Just buy those at a farmer's market or get some off a friend who grows them because it's like you're wasting space in your garden plot and you're wasting your time growing it. And you're not going to be that passionate about it and so it's probably not going to do that well anyway. How big is your garden? So like this is a huge factor into what you should grow. And this is something that I see a lot of amateur gardeners making the mistake with. So I had a garden last year that we set up and then they really wanted to grow cauliflower. Well, the garden they were growing it in was two by about six feet long. This garden is not going to fit cauliflower. Cauliflower and broccoli and cabbage have all a two foot, two foot square minimum the amount of space they need. I usually say a cute, like a square meter is what you need for a broccoli or cabbage or cauliflower. They have huge leaves that take up a huge amount of space once they're like fully grown. So if you have a small garden, you shouldn't really be thinking about growing stuff like that. The same goes for tomatoes. Certain tomato plants are really bushy and take up a lot of space. So they're not always the best thing to put into a small garden. You can think about doing pots as well. So calculate your total square footage of your garden and that's going to like kind of give you an idea of how many plants that you can have in your garden. Now if you're growing things like lettuce or kale or peas or beans, they don't take up that much space. So you might want to consider putting more of that and maybe one larger plant that you're interested in trying to grow. Or like I said, growing the larger plants outside of your garden in pots can also be a really good idea. Um, and then the, like, the most important thing about picking what you want to grow is to plan and then plan again. So make a plan, go through it, and then Come back a couple of days later and look at it again. Does it seem like something you're able to keep up? Does it seem like it's food that you're going to eat? And also, does it, does it seem like something that's going to be in, like interesting and enjoyable for you to look at? And this is one thing that people often forget, that they don't think of the aesthetics of their garden. But that's going to be in your backyard or in your space for the whole summer. So every time you come outside, you're gonna look at your garden. You should make sure that it looks nice because it's gonna make you more likely to invest your time in it if you walk outside and say, oh my God, that looks so beautiful. You're gonna walk around in it. You're gonna notice things more often. You're gonna do the chores in your garden more frequently. So really think about that plan and then plan again and then maybe even plan again. All good gardeners I know, we sit there and plan for months before we even think about putting a seed in the ground. So it's just some things to like remember is that a lot of the time amateur gardeners rush in, they buy so many seeds, they buy all these supplies. Maybe slow down a little bit and take your time and think about it. There, there's no worry. I know that it's February and we're all excited for spring, but you still have almost four months until you're going to be putting anything outside. So I wouldn't really worry too much about rushing into it. Okay, we're going to talk about seeds. So I'm going to talk about the companies that I buy seeds from and why I like them and why I think they are worth your time. That being said, you can buy seeds from home hardware too or the grocery store. Almost all of them are packaged and processed properly. I will say a little note that seeds from the dollar store and sometimes from the grocery store and home hardware aren't always stored um, very good. 
So sometimes they're a little bit too dry or sometimes they're a little bit older. Their shelf life is a little bit close to it. So that means that your germination of those seeds is going to probably be a little bit less. And so in my opinion, it's worth buying seeds off a company that spends all of their time perfecting their seeds and making sure that the plants grow well and making sure that they have high germination rates. It's not going to cost you that much more in like the seed cost, but the amount that you will get back in the plants that grow is huge. You're getting a much better value in your plants. So one thing I'd like to comment on is that um, I find a lot of the time this time of year over since the pandemic has started, a lot of people get this um, hysteria over running out of seeds. And I find it very comical um, because there are like the seed stock is huge. They may run out of packaged seeds temporarily. Yes, that might happen. But they're not going to run out of all of the seeds in all of Ontario just from us gardeners buying them. Like farmers buy way more crop and greenhouse growers buy way more crop than we do, like in seeds. So if you find that you're rushing into buying your seeds because you think there's not going to be any left, don't worry about that. Even if they run out of stock online, your home hardwares or your local nurseries will always have seeds. It's, it's just not something that you have to worry about. So take your time and don't listen to people that are telling you that it's going to run out. It's, that's not true. If one company runs out, you can buy them from another company. Sometimes you will run out of new stock. So every year, all the seed companies put out a catalog and then there's new stock in that catalog. Because it's a new stock, they might not have as much seed volume, so they may run out of that type of thing quicker. But there's always another alternative that you can pick. So my favorite seed companies, I have three that I always buy from and that I have really great results from. So that's not saying I have I bought seeds from probably everywhere, realistically. Um, you know, we all have the same flaw, right? Like, oh, that looks kind of fun. Oh, that looks kind of fun. I have a big suitcase full of seeds at home. So I buy seeds from everywhere, but these are the three companies that I like for their reliability. So it's not necessarily that I like everything about them. Some of them use practices that maybe I don't like and I prefer buying organic and maybe the organic selection is not that great, but I kind of use a mix of the three to end up having a good stock of what I need. So there's the Ontario Seed Company, so OC, o OSC, and um, they have a really excellent website that is really easy to navigate. Lots of tips on there about how to grow the seeds and really good descriptions of each of the plants. They have a really good selection about what type of plant to buy. And they also have lots of blogs about which, which ones maybe if you don't have a lot of space you should be picking. So I think that company is really well set up for the new home gardener to kind of research and look around and see what they're interested in. They have really good germination rates as well, which is really important because if you buy a package of seeds and half of them don't grow, that's not a good value. And that, that seed is not being stored properly and the plant itself might not be as strong as well because of that. So the Ontario Seed Company is really good at reliability. So it's one of those things, if you have a really large garden and say you're buying a larger quantity of carrot seeds or lettuce seeds so that you can reseed over the summer, you want to make sure those are good seeds. Like it's very different than buying one package of seeds if you're buying thousands of seeds. So I've had really, really good germin germination rates from almost every seed that I bought from there. So for me, as someone who does it on a slightly larger scale, that is super important. And they also have organic options on there as well. So you can kind of pick and choose what works best for your garden. Um, the next one is Vessies. Vessies is like a hard and true name in gardening. 
Um, I don't, I don't love everything that they do, but they do have a really excellent selection of seeds. I would say personally for me, I usually only buy flowers or special varieties off of Vessies just because I find that the Ontario Seed Company has a bit better like vegetable selection for Ontario. Um, Vessies is in the east coast of Canada, so they have like kind of different conditions than we do in Ontario. It gets really hot here, and so I prefer to buy my vegetable seeds off of them, but Vessies also has an excellent selection of vegetable as well. So if you are already going to order from Vessies, I would definitely consider them, but if not, I usually just use them for my specialty seeds. And then the last one is West Coast Seeds. West Coast seeds, I love. They are such good seeds. Their germination rate is super good. And they have all these kind of funky varieties that they have developed over the years. I love using them. I use them all the time. So what I do usually with my West Coast seeds is like they're my inspiration to try something new. I usually buy them in store. So nurseries like Richie's carries their whole line pretty much. And uh, I think so does Peter Knippel and a couple of the other ones in town. So I don't buy those ones online because I'm not buying enough to justify it. I'll just walk in the store and kind of get excited and pick a few different kinds. So, and they're really good quality seeds as well. The plants that grow out of those seeds are always really high quality. So if you want to try those, that would be good. One, uh, there's two other companies that I'll mention just because they're both really awesome. So. There's Johnny's Seed Company. Um, so I don't use Johnny's that much because they're American. So you have to ship it across the border and then I get really large quantities and because I get really large quantities, I have to buy, I have to pay duty on it because it's higher. And so for me, like financially, it doesn't really work out, but Johnny's has probably the best catalog of seeds. They do extensive research on like how to grow them and which ones grow best. So I always suggest to people, even if you're not gonna buy from Johnny's, go on their website and do a little bit of research because they have a ton of articles on there on how to grow it. And they have a lot of their research on there as well. So it's really interesting. And you might find out about a variety or two that you'd never heard of because they're kind of inventing new options all the time and adopting new options from other um, growers that find them. And then the other company I would like to mention is Mum Sprouting Seeds. So I use Mum Sprouting Seeds to buy all the seeds that I use for my microgreens. Um, these are not necessarily like what you're gonna buy for your garden, but Mum Sprouting Seeds has really awesome growing trays. Their trays are the best ones I have found yet. I've had some for like five years. They've never cracked, they don't bend, they're super durable. So they come with a flat tray and then a tray that goes in that tray that has holes in it. And so water drainage is extremely important for growing uh, seedlings. So I grow almost all of them sitting on a tray like that. So whether I'm growing them in small soil blocks or whether I'm growing them in pots, I sit them on that drainage tray all the time because they're so easy to move. Sometimes I find a lot of the trays that you buy from home hardware or somewhere else, they're really flexible. They like bend a lot. If you leave them outside for 10 minutes in the UV, they're crunchy and garbage. So I like to try and pick things that are gonna last me five, 10 years in the garden so that I'm getting my money's worth out of them. And I'm not kind of negatively affecting the environment by growing my own garden. That would kind of defeat the purpose for me. So Mom Sprouting Seeds just has the best trays I've found of anyone. So that's what I use them for. I use them to buy all of the like trays that I put things in. So when I was talking there, I was talking about um, what to grow your seeds in. So we talked a little bit about soil, but we have to kind of discuss how like what you're going to put the soil into so a lot of people will use those 
small four inch pots um, that you see at the nursery that have all the annuals in. That's okay. Um, some people will use a technique called soil blocking. So what it is is a, you make this very wet soil mixture and then you use a press um, to make little cubes out of soil. And then you just put the seed into that cube and then that cube later gets kind of potted up into the four inch pot. There is definitely an advantage to soil blocking if you ever want to try it. It's not that difficult to do and Johnny's has lots of videos on how to do it and so does YouTube. Soil blocking's advantage is, is that you don't have too much soil for one seed. So one of the biggest mistakes I see people make is that they have one small seed in a four inch pot and then all this soil around that seed. One of the most important parts about starting seeds is consistent humidity. Keeping your water levels the same the whole time is super important. So if you have too much soil in your pot, it's going to dry out faster and it's also going to stay wet too long. So there's tiny little plant, it has almost no roots, it doesn't even have leaves yet, it can't absorb all of that water. So it's going to sit around the roots of it for too long. So I always tell people start as small as you can. So you can get those 72 trays or the 48 trays that have got all the holes in them. If you can afford it, please buy one of those and then transfer those plants afterwards into a bigger pot. You're going to have a way easier time controlling the humidity and you're gonna have a way easier time keeping the plants healthy. Um, on top of those trays, a lot of the time they have a dome. Those are very, very good for starting seeds. So you don't want a, a fresh seedling that just germinated and came out of the seed to dry out ever. Now again, you don't want them swimming in water either, but when they dry out, they cannot recover. They actually like dry up like a shriveled little thing and I'm sure all of you have done it we all have and then you feel horrible because they're all dried up and shriveled because you forgot to water them for like a day and a half so definitely get the dome if you can it helps keep that humidity in and then you're not going to have to worry about watering them very often watering your seedlings can be a little bit of a task I suggest that you use a spray bottle. So like a little spritz bottle is the most accurate way to water your seedling. So put your seedling into wet soil for sure. Don't put them into dry soil. So make sure whatever medium that you're putting them into before you put that in, make sure the soil is already wet. And then after that, just come once every couple of days. You'll have to see how fast your soil dries out. Depends on your house and everything like that. And just spritz them. They do not need a ton of water at the beginning because like I said, they don't even have leaves. They barely have roots. So you're just gonna overwhelm them if you try and pour water on them. Definitely try and spritz them. That's gonna be your best, your best bet for something like that. Um, my biggest concern for starting seeds is timing. Do not start your seeds too early. This will be a detriment to you a hundred percent. Like right away, you are going to have major issues with the size that your seedlings are going to get. The <laughs> it can be a pretty big issue because if you start, say for example, a lot of people want to start their seedlings now and they don't have a lot of space. If you start a tomato plant now, by the time it's allowed to go out, which is the end of May, you are going to have this huge long vine of a tomato plant. So on the back of the seed, packages that you get or on the bag of the seeds whichever your what whatever medium you're using it for it will tell you the date to plant it for our area follow that follow that to the T you know you don't don't try and mess around and start them early 
it's not going to end well and you're going to be super disappointed because you can't take them outside to make them feel better and they're just going to die and be unhealthy inside. So definitely just wait until the timing says on the package. So right now we're in February. Really the only thing you should be starting is peppers and eggplant and then some wildflowers depending on what you're growing this year. Um, okay. Okay. If you have a south facing room that gets a lot of sun, you could start your seeds a little bit earlier to allow them to be like quite big plants, but you're going to need a lot of space. So it's just kind of something to think about. Okay. So, and one thing that happens a lot of time, if you start your seeds too early, you'll get a less quality plant for the whole summer because the plant will basically be dying the whole time that you have it there. And so you're not going to be able to have a good robust plant that's going to produce for the whole season. It's going to have issues with its roots. It's going to have issues with other things. And so, yeah, it's just, it's not best in my opinion. Just take your time. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what needs to be started inside and what needs to be direct seeded uh, just quickly so that people are not um, using stuff that they can like they're not um, pre-planting stuff that can be just planted outside because it's not it's going to take up space in your planting area indoors and you don't need that it's not necessary okay so I had a question from Tracy uh, I'll just answer that now. Um, with bottom watering, I use the trays from Mum's Sprouting Seeds. So I love bottom watering. Um, once the plants are big, yep, that totally works really well. So I use, there's like, they're, they have the double trays and I use them for everything. And then so once the seedlings are at the point where we can bottom water, meaning that their roots are almost to the bottom of whatever they're growing in, you take out the drainage tray and then put them right into that flat non-drainage tray. So that's a good question. Um, and then I think there's another question. I'll just see. Cannot see it anymore. I do not know why. Um, so if someone wants to type it, I don't know. Um, so I'm going to talk about the plants that I had in my garden last year and whether they're direct seed or whether they need to be started early. So we had carrots. Uh, no, sorry, I'm going to start on this side. So we have tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants. So those all have to be started inside fairly early. So eggplant and um, peppers are now mid February is usually when I start them so I'll start getting everything ready next week and then I'll germinate them and then plant them usually by the end of February so for peppers and eggplants they have a really long germination time it is so long it's three weeks most of the time and it's like if you have that in soil for three weeks and you you don't see anything because until the plant germinates it doesn't have any shoots so you don't see anything at all for three weeks it can be really hard to keep that properly moist so for those I always start them in paper towel I put a couple of seeds on the paper towel moisten the whole thing fold the paper towel over on top of them and put that paper towel into a Ziploc bag I leave it on a shelf somewhere warm so my planting area is all right beside our water heater and our furnace so it's pretty warm there you do not want them to get cold these are hot weather plants they enjoy the heat but they definitely will benefit from that consistent moisture then once I see a sprout I will take them out carefully one by one and put them into a small pot this is like you will have a much higher success rate if you do it this way for sure and then the tomatoes are in March, so it's a little bit later, mid-March. Same technique with the paper towel for them. We had um, kale you can start inside if you want a little bit early. That probably wouldn't be till maybe end of March, beginning of April, um, as you don't want the plants to be too big. Same with spinach, you can start some of them 
spinach, bok choy, pak choy. You can start them about three weeks before we have our last frost. So it can be a little bit tricky in Canada because our last frost is not always consistent. Um, but I usually go with our last frost being like May 2-4-ish weekend. So you can start some of your greens inside a couple of weeks before that, um, before last frost. But things like bok choy, spinach, and kale can all go out as soon as the ground is thawed. So they don't worry about the cool weather. So for herbs, we did basil, chives, parsley, and dill. Those are all from seed. The only ones that I start inside are parsley and basil. Dill is a huge plant and grows super fast. There's no need to start it inside. Chives are the same thing. They grow super fast. You don't need to start those inside. Basil is a hot weather plant, so it kind of needs a bit of a boost so that it produces quick enough so that we have it for the whole season. And same with parsley. It's a fairly leafy plant, so it's good to have it kind of going before we put them outside. All of those cannot go outside until the weather is warm, so May 2, 4 or later. The vegetables we had were carrots. So carrots are direct seed every time. Um, onions, we do direct seed for bunching onions. Um, I have a technique I'll share in a couple minutes for growing large storage onions um, and they're to be started, they are started inside. Greens like Swiss chard, spinach and kale can be direct seeded or started like I said a couple of weeks early. So they would be maybe beginning of April. You start thinking about planting a few of those. So once it's warm enough, they can go outside. Lettuce as well is a direct seed plant. You can totally start lettuce inside. I just don't think it's worth it. Lettuce is so fast. It's like four weeks to grow lettuce. Growing it inside, you kind of risk that they're gonna grow too fast and just be these long, leggy, not very green leaves of lettuce. I just don't really think it's worth starting them inside. Um, we do squash. We did acorn and butternut squash last year. Squash and cucumber you're going to start inside but only about three to four weeks before last frost. So that's like the beginning of May. The reason is is that these plants get really big really quickly and so you're going to run out of space. Their leaves are really huge and they will shade all your other plants. So you don't want them to be very big. If you don't have enough room you don't have to start these inside. You can direct seed them and they'll pick up very quickly from compared to the ones that are started inside. So it's totally up to you. If you have the space, go for it. If you don't, don't worry about it. I also think that sometimes buying certain plants is worth it and cucumber seems to be one of those. I don't know why, but a lot of the times the ones that are grown in greenhouses when they're young seem to be much happier than the ones that I grow in my basement. Um, we do beets and radishes. They're both direct seed as soon as the soil is not, um, radishes are early as soon as the soil is not uh, frozen anymore. Uh, beets, I normally wait a little bit until the soil is about 10 degrees. Um, Brussels sprouts, you can start them inside for sure. Um, if you don't have a big garden, don't grow Brussels sprouts. It's a fairly big plant and you can't harvest them until after frost. So it's the whole summer you're just watching these Brussels sprouts grow. It can be a bit tedious. Um, what else do we have here? Pole beans. So beans, don't start them inside. I never suggest that you start them inside. What I do suggest is that you germinate them before you plant them. So they're direct planted as soon as it's warm. So mid-May is usually safe-ish for them. They don't like frost, but you can take a risk because it's just a bean. They're not expensive to grow. Germinate them for maybe two days in the paper towel and then put them in the ground. You don't need to have this as a full plant before it goes out. They grow really fast and you're probably going to do more harm growing them indoors before they go outside, in my opinion. Um, potatoes, those are obviously you buy seed potatoes and then you plant those warm weather only. You don't want any potatoes in the cold, they're going to rot and it's no good and their leaves can't handle any frost at all. So I don't even put potatoes in until the first week of June. Um, cucumber we went over. 
Swiss charge we went over. Um, kale we went over. So I also do a bunch of flowers as well. So I usually start my flowers the beginning of March. Flowers kind of take a long time to develop. Um, so I do nasturtium and a couple of other kinds. Um, and they kind of take a little bit of time to grow. Things like sweet peas, sunflowers, and marigolds, you don't really need to start them ahead of time. They grow really, really fast in the garden, so I would put those direct seed. And the onions. So I was going to talk about how we do our onions. So I learned this technique two years ago and then we tried it last year and it works amazing. So we use one of the, the sprouting sheets from mom. So that's the double tray that you can get. We fill the whole tray with germination soil mix and then we spread the seeds, the onion seeds out in like a lot, like a lot of them, like hundreds of onion seeds on this one tray. We do it in February. So you can do uh, winter started seeds, which is basically you put seeds in a pot that has a like a clear lid outside and you leave it all winter for onions. This does work and certain types of um, herbs and flowers, wildflowers from our, will work. But I'm just so bad at remembering that they're there and then I usually step on them. So I do it this way, I start them inside so we have a full tray that's full of germination soil mix. I sprinkle the seeds. This year we did them in three rows so that it was easier to know where the seeds are. You could probably just put them everywhere. By the time we brought them to the greenhouse in, that was probably middle of May, we planted those. They were only this tall. So onions do not grow fast. Um, storage onions do not grow fast. They're slow. And so what that meant was that we then picked each individual onion. It was about this big. It had a little bit of a root about that big. We would cut a little bit of the tip off so it wouldn't fall over and we planted it in the soil. These were the best onions I've gotten ever. I will never buy an onion set ever again because my onion sets would get about this big. So they'd maybe double the size of the set. It was always very disappointing. The onions we harvested this year were this big. They were huge. They were delicious. They gave us green onion shoots the whole summer. So this is my technique. I will always use that forever now with onions. I think that we've gone over pretty much everything for starting seeds. Again, I'm going to come back in a couple weeks. I'm going to show you some things that I've started. Maybe we'll do a little bit of garden planning. If you have any questions that I didn't answer, just put it in the comments for the video below and I'll send you a reply on there. Thanks for checking in guys and I'll see you in a couple weeks.